Uh, this is my water chain system. I have an elbow down there with fly screen on it with some clips, as you can see. Going up, across, T-piece, coming down to a shutoff valve. And then the next tank has got the same thing with T-piece or L-piece with fly screen on the end of it. Comes up to a valve for each tank, running down along to a T-piece there with a shutoff valve and the same in that tank. As you can see, comes up, down, and I've actually got it working at the moment. So that valve's open, comes down to an elbow, comes across, and then it comes into a, a Y fitting. Now, what I've got is that is out, so the water's actually draining at the moment, and that is the water going in. So that is on, that is off. So at the moment, I've got that valve open, that valve open, and it's draining. As you can see, it gets down to the level where I set them at, and then it stops. But I usually stop it before that. So when I get it to the right level, I, sh I shut off the valve for that one. Then I open this valve, because it's all worked on a siphon, you see. So open this valve, that's now going to start draining from that tank. And the hose goes down along here, along, and as you can hear, it's coming out there and going down the drain. And that's in my shower, so there you go. And it's as simple as that, and each tank I have a high mark of where I want the water to go to when I fill them and usually I set them down and drain them down to about just below the bottom of the piping where the, where the if you have a look if it'll focus for me so you can see that the water's kind of below the clear but above the rest of it but they will go all the way to the bottom of the piping and then they lose the suction but the best part is is if you drain the water first and then what you do is once you've drained your tanks so I do that one the top one then I do the middle one then I do the bottom one and then what I do is I shut the valve off and then I put the water in so once you put the water back in again it keeps the siphon because at all times there's always water in the pipes so what I do is always drain the tanks first, all of them, to where I want, and then I fill them up one by one at a time. Which is, and then this pipe is the in, is coming from my IBC with a pump there, and it's a remote control. So I push the button on the motor, I push the button on the remote, and it starts the pumping from there into that fitting that you saw. So the water comes in, comes into here, and when I finish draining, I shut that valve off, I open that valve, push the button on the remote, and then the water comes in and fills the tanks. So there's always water in the pipes and it keeps a siphon. And that's my way of doing my DIY water changes. So. All I have to do is connect the two pipes, one to the shower, one to the pump, and it works every time. Very simple, no drilling holes in tanks, always keeping a siphon, and it works every time. Alright, as you can see, I've drained that one. And so, see, I have a fill mark and a drain mark. So. What I do is I drain each tank to the, each level, and it's usually about a third of a tank. So I do a third of a tank every two weeks. So as you can see, I've done that tank, so I shut that valve off, and then I go down and I open the valve on the bottom tank. 
and then that tank slowly drains to the level that I want it to as well. Once again, as you can see, being the lower of the lot, it'll take a little bit longer, but it does drain because the lowest point is here. So the water siphon always creates a siphon because it's from there to here is a lower point. So your water will always suck out and come down to here and then out through there because that's your lowest point. All right. Siphons always work sucking to the lowest point. So this works all the time, every time. No leaks, no nothing. And as you can see, I've got a join that joins into that, which is just a normal tap fitting. That's just a normal Y fitting that fits on your garden taps. And I've just got the spigot that joins into the top of that, that fits my 20 mil pipe. And as you can see, I've got elbows, tap, nothing flash or fantastic. It's all simple. It's all irrigation fittings. And I use clear piping so that if there gets a water, if there gets a bubble in the water anywhere, I can see it. And if the water stops and there's anything in the water or any problems, I can see it. And that's why I use the clear pipe instead of the black pipe, what they use for normal irrigation, because the black pipe, I can't see anything. Whereas the clear pipe, I can see what's going on. And here's one of my female, short female vino placos, or bristlenose, some people call them. Here's my angel coming to say hello. So yeah. But it's very simple, very easy. It took me just a couple of hours to set it all up. And it's just a matter of working all the way down to your lowest point. Very simple. And that's how I do all of my racks. It's the same way. Is it starts at the highest point coming down to a valve and then a valve from each tank running down the side of the frame. Each tank drains into the same pipe and then out. So you use the same pipe to drain the water and the same pipe to put the water in. So you don't need to drill holes in tanks. You don't need to do any extra of those funny S-Bend pipes or whatever. It's just plain and simple, just a piece of pipe with a tube up and down the side. Very simple, very easy. The whole lot probably cost me no more than a hundred bucks. Parts I got from Bunnings from the irrigation section. So, there you go. All right, so the reason I have these L-type fittings, as you can see, with the fly screen on them, is because if one gets blocked, I've always got the other side. Sorry about the reflection, but I've got two sides that'll suck water out. So if one happens to be blocked by any chance or for any reason, the other one will still suck water. So no matter what happens, they will always drain. And as you can see, that's nearly down to where I want it to. So what I do is I, I then stop the drain, that one. So once I've stopped the drain, or it draining, so what I do is I leave the valves as they are for that tank, and then what I do is I use my remote here for the pump, is I'll turn that valve on, and then I'll turn the pump on, and as you can see, it now starts filling the tank. As simple as that. So that, the drain is now off. This one is now on, which is from the IBC tank outside. And as you can see, and you can hear the noise, it is now filling the tank. All right. So it doesn't take very long to fill the tanks. And I usually drain from the top, then drain the next one, then drain the bottom one, and then I fill the bottom one and work my way up because the valves are already open. So as you can see, it's fairly fast. It's a 
fairly strong pump so it doesn't take long to fill the tanks. The longest part is draining the tanks because I'm using gravity. All right. So then what I do is when I get it to the level I want, is I'll just stop the pump, shut the valve off, and then I go up to the next one that I want to fill. And I open that valve. And then I turn the pump back on again. And as you can see, away it goes. So it never breaks the seal of the water. There's no air bubbles, no nothing, because there's always water in the pipes. If that makes sense. And see, there's two two pieces there's water coming out from both of them it's hard to get the angle but yeah as you can see there's one one way and one the other way there we go one one way and one the other way so therefore that they don't get blocked All right. and as you can see it doesn't take long to fill a tank very quickly actually this is the quickest of the whole lot And I've already put the chemicals in between the, when the tanks were drained before I started pumping the water in, which I didn't show you. But I've put the water conditioner in and I've put some um, chemicals stuff for the plants to help the plants grow. So as you can see, that's at the level that I want. So I stop the pump. See, it's still got water in the system. So I turn that valve off. I then open this valve. There's no air in the system. A couple of bubbles in. And then up it goes and it now fills the top tank. And therefore this way it always keeps water in the pipes. So therefore it doesn't break the siphon at all. And then it's ready for when you want to start again because then when you do it next time is you start at the top and work your way down once again very simple very easy and anybody can do it and like i said it only took me a couple of hours the other week to do this lot of tanks and this is how i do all my tanks all right and these just so you know these are push fit connectors so be careful once you slide the tube on you will not be able to slide the tube off which is very very hard and that's why I don't have um, crimps or anything over them because the tubing fits very tightly over the connector and once you get it on you cannot get it off very very hard the only way to get it off actually is to heat the pipe and use it and pull it off very quickly while it's still hot. So as you can see once again, very quick, very easy to fill the tanks. And that's it, it's as simple as that. And it's a very simple, easy system. All right, so I stop the pump. I go down to the valve, turn the valve off, and it then keeps the water in the system. I go down to the lower valve, I shut the lower valve off and then I come across to the valve where the water comes in and I shut that off and as you can see there's water in all of the pipes all the way and it's as simple as that and like I said it only took a couple of hours to make and it's finished and then all you do is you just disconnect these are just normal garden hoses with hose connections and you just disconnect them simple as that see simple as that no, and then what I do is I just take the hose oops, take the hose back outside and I plug it back into my tank so I've used that much so 
I'm just about half. So when I get it down to about a third, I will fill it up and then I'll run the pump for a day, which helps get rid of the chlorine. And I've got fly screen over the top of the tank here and it's an open lid. So all the chlorine will evaporate through that lid over the next couple of days after I've filled it up. And as I said, I just do a water change once every two weeks on those tanks. And it's very simple, very easy. There you go.